Xiao Bang, Stefan here, chilling out, hiking up massive bloody mountains just to get a nice backdrop, talking about the past. If that's what you're into, consider subscribing. So ever since I've married my beautiful Vietnamese wife, Happy wedding memories. I've become a lot more interested in Vietnamese history because if you're from the West like I am, you probably only know one thing about the history of Vietnam. Unless, of course, you subscribe to Epimetheus because he's just released a video on all of Vietnamese history and he's totally beaten me to the punch. But I'm going to be making a few videos on Vietnamese history, starting with this one on Vietnamese prehistory. So we know from excavations like the one at Tam Pa Ling in Laos that humans have lived in Southeast Asia for about 63,000 years, maybe even a little bit longer. We'll probably never know because a lot of coastal sites are underwater. These people were almost certainly part of the first human expansion into Asia and Australia, and their modern relatives uh, could probably still be found in places like the uh, Andaman Islands and the Sentinelese who still live as uh, modern hunter-gatherers today. Animal bones found alongside such ancient humans show that mainly they had a diet, at least in terms of meat, consisting of pig and monkeys, but also, crazily, rhinos and orangutans, which definitely shocks our modern sensibilities, but you've got to remember they lived in a, in a different time. It was a hard, bloody life, I'm sure. An orangutan eat orangutan world, if you will. Around 14,000 years ago in what's now northern Vietnam emerged this culture that we call the Haubinian culture. And these guys started to uh, become a lot more sophisticated than their predecessors. They made large almond-shaped axes and uh, they took much better advantage of the plant resources available to them. We can't really call them farmers yet, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. So far, all of the Halbinian sites we've found are located in caves, but if they're anything like their modern relatives who still hunt and gather in tropical environments, they probably spend the monsoon season in caves and the drier season living in temporary camps made out of bamboo shelters and things like that. We'll never likely be able to find Halbinian summer shelters if they even exist because they leave such a small archaeological footprint and the Vietnamese rivers are incredibly active. The Red River in North Vietnam makes the country a whopping 100 meters bigger each year. So any tiny evidence that they may have left behind is under literally tons and tons of mud. It's impossible to excavate. In about the year 2500, 2000 BCE, the sea receded out of what's now the Red River Valley and the river did its thing, depositing sediment, creating this very fertile plain. And a new group of people who are likely ethnically different to the, the previous inhabitants of Vietnam moved into the area out of the highlands of Vietnam and southern China. These people, known to archaeologists as the Phung Nguyen, uh, really brought a technological revolution with them from these highlands, and that was rice farming. Now, it's not what we would think of today. They didn't have rice paddies. They practiced slash and burn agriculture. They would burn away the forest, burn away the plain, and uh, in its place, they would plant rice. Doing this, you would get a, a couple of seasons of good rice before the yields started to drop. So they didn't fully live in uh, permanent settlements but they are a lot more permanent than the previous Halbinian culture. And so far there have been about 50 villages excavated. So we really start to see an increase in population, start to see an increase in their sophistication. And of course they're, they're farming rice. They can, they can do a lot more, they can produce a lot more food and their food supply is a lot more stable. Rice isn't just great for building civilizations. It's also a fantastic post-hike snack. For about 2,000 years ago, the Phung Nguyen also developed bronze, da -da -da -da, the final piece in the ancient civilization jigsaw metallurgy. Now, the artistic style that they had, it was very similar to their previous artistic style in the Stone Age. This suggests that it wasn't brought about by an invasion, that the Vietnamese developed this technology either through trade 
or uh, developed it themselves, but it was not brought about by an invasion. This is a continuation of the Fung win. They've just got metal now, so that's cool. Well done, Vietnamese. Civilization really kicked off though when the ancient Vietnamese developed wet rice agriculture, created all those paddy fields that are so characteristic of Southeast Asia now. That was a much bigger technological revolution than bronze ever was. The Red River Valley is incredibly fertile. It floods annually. They get two monsoons and you can get two harvests of rice in one year. This creates a real abundance of food compared to previous generations and uh, really allowed them to develop settled communities and civilization as we know it. The perfect illustration of this is what we call the Dong Son culture. The most distinctive artifacts from the Dong Son are really these huge bronze drums that they would make. This would require a huge amount of resources. They are absolutely beautiful. I'm sure there's one flying on screen around now. They show all sorts of different scenes from prehistoric Vietnam, and it's theorized that they were used to summon soldiers, mark special occasions, anything you would need a massive bong. That's what they used it for, probably. The sophistication of the Dong Son culture is also shown in the increase in uh, lavish burials. The previous Fung Win, there wasn't seemingly much social stratification. There's no elaborate grave goods, no huge monuments, things like that. That all changes in the Dong Son period. You get elaborate grave goods. You get an increase in the central organization. You get an increase in military power. One site alone had 10,000 bronze arrows excavated. So they're clearly marshalling men. They're clearly ready for war. There's clearly central organization. They also started building proper towns and fortified citadels like at Go Loa in northern Vietnam. This is the first time in Vietnamese history we start to see this real monumental architecture. So it's definitely a, a huge step up and really the start of Vietnamese civilization. The transition from the Phuong Nguyen to the Dong Son in just a thousand years really illustrates just how quickly Vietnamese civilization developed from a seemingly loose collection of tribes, semi-nomadic practicing rice farming to full-on civilization, metal war, forts, international trade. There's a lot of Chinese artifacts found with the Dong Son. Interestingly to me anyways, the Dong Son culture marks the beginning of Vietnamese oral history and coincides with what the Vietnamese call Van Lang, really the first Vietnamese kingdom. With this being so far in the past, like two and a half, three thousand years ago, history is really fused with legend. For example, the second king of Van Lang, and I'm going to have to pause this. I think I need to ask my wife one more time how to say his name. Lạc Long Wung. Lạc Lam Wung was said to be descended from dragons. And his wife, I'm going to have to pause the video again. Alga was descended from fairies. They had 100 children hatched from eggs, and these 100 children are the ancestors, according to legend of the Vietnamese, and, and that's why the Vietnamese share so many surnames in common because of these 100 kids. And it also ties into the belief that the Vietnamese are the descendants of dragons and fairies. My wife is making a power symbol now in Vietnamese pride. <laughs> so I, I do find that really interesting how much uh, cultural continuity there is and uh, just how Vietnamese oral history can go back to 3,000 years ago. At least from the perspective of my own country, England, we do not have an oral history that long. I think it's fair to say our longest oral history really begins with the Arthurian legends, maybe in the 5th century, you know one and a half thousand years later than Vietnamese oral history begins. That's all I've got for you on Vietnamese history so far. I'm going to create more videos in the future. Tune in next time. I'm going to be talking about uh, human sacrifices, which should be cool. Everyone loves that. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, skiddly-doo. See ya.